everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make a bottle carrier for a large bottle of wine, which is standard wine bottle size, and then this was three, just over three inches in width. Okay, so you can get those larger or wider ones. You might be able to get it in here because I have made this three and a half in width. Okay, so anything more than three and a half, it may start to bulge a little bit on the sides. But this is for your standard uh, 750 mil. Okay, now this is something I get asked to do a lot and the reason it's taken me so long is I wanted to make sure that I can get it as strong as possible because you need it to be really firm and you need it to be strong enough to hold the weight of a bottle. These are, you know, heavy. And the last thing I want is for someone to make it and then there's fall out or the bag and the wine go everywhere or something like that. So I'm really pleased with how this has come together. I think it works really well. And if you follow exactly what I kind of say in terms of what I recommend for your card weights and glues and things like that, and if you can get alternatives that are similar, then it will work because the glues I use help give the box its stiffness and the cardstock that I use is obviously a good weight as well. Okay, so this is how it looks. It's got this really nice detail with the wooden dowels on the top. I have made this gift tag, which you can write on the back there, and this is using my new Bright Rosa fern border, and I've used the smaller one here, and then I've done these little sprigs as well, and then I've just knotted it with some of the baker's twine on the top and for the sentiment there it's just the sentiment toppers which I shared last week and my what did I get and I used the gold because I thought that worked really well with the orange. This is using one of the papers from the brand new National History Museum papers, I'll show you all that in a moment. And then on the bottom it's reinforced and again with the glues that I use but that goes in. It's going to have tissue wrapped around it because this is a gift, this is going off to somebody and then you lift it up and I promise you you can see there, I'm still holding it, that is not bowing. There is four, five, there's six layers of card in there, strong cardstock. That is not going anywhere and the glue that I've used as well is so stiff. And it is just, I confidently I could walk with that now and that's not going to go anywhere. And because you've got the strong wooden dowels here as well, if you don't have the wooden dowels, try and find something similar. Otherwise, you will have to maybe use ribbon, but then you'll need to use brads, and you'll need to make sure they're not going to rip through the card when you lift it. I've really thought about this, and that's why it takes me time sometimes with these more heavier items. So I've done the beer bottles, but I used the grey board or chipboard to make that one. This one, I've still got another idea with chipboard for a wine bottle. So again, that will come in time, but for... Yeah, for cardstock, this is the best I can come up with at the moment, and I think it's really nice. So let me show you how to make it. Okay, so you're going to need um, something to cut a circle, or an, a, a semi-circle with anyway. I'm using the X-Cut Circle Cutter, but you can use a plate, anything like that is fine. Papers I'm using are from the lovely Natural History Museum Organic Kaleidoscope. I have shared all of the contents of these papers over on my What Did I Get video, so I'll link that up there for you. But it's beautiful. And that's the one that I've chose to use today. So this is five by 12. Okay, you need the full length. So you want two pieces of pattern paper that size. Then you'll need four pieces of 12 by 12. Now, the reason why I've got these odd colours is because I'd already started to film this and I've already made the half that I was doing in the proper colours, which you'll see in a minute. So I could have, oh, I would got so cross with myself when I looked up and saw that I hadn't even hit record. So ignore the colours of these. These are just, I'm not really a fan of these. I've had them around for ages. I want four pieces of cardstock. That's 10 by 11, okay? And along the 11 inch side, you want to score two pieces at three and a half, then rotate and score at three and a half again, and then at seven, just to the first score line. Do that on two pieces. And then you also, with a pencil, just want to mark a pencil mark at five and a pencil mark at 10. And also at 10 at the bottom here, we're going to use this to line it all up. Okay. And then also you want to come down one and a quarter along that three and a half inch score line. So just come down to one and a quarter and put a pencil mark. Do that on two pieces. And then on your other two pieces of 11 by 10, along the 11 inch side, you want to score at seven and a half, then rotate and score at three, just to the first score line, and six and a half all the way down. And then back along the 11 inch side, you want to put a pencil mark at one, and at the bottom here at one, and then one at six, and then down the seven and a half inch score line, again, one and a quarter inches down. Again, we're gonna be cutting all this in a moment. 
two pieces like that. So what you will end up having is an L shape that's on this side. You'll have two like that. You can see my kind of L here. Two like that and then two with your L shape this way. Okay. You're also going to need two wooden dowels. I got these from the works, but you can get these across the world from hardware stores and stuff. And these are just over 12 inches long and they are about five mil. They're really strong. I can't bend that without snapping it. Okay, so with the, we'll start with these ones here. So you'll have two with the L on this side. You just want to, we'll fold and burnish everything. Okay, and then you'll have that score line where you just scored to here. You want to start from the bottom here and you'll have this square. You're just going to cut straight up like so and then just cut a wedge. This is now my scrap so I'm just doing this a bit rough but just cut wedges like so. So you've created this tab. Then rotate it around and you want to cut down that score line to the first score line like this. Rotate around again, you're going to cut that out completely. Okay, so just remove the score line. If you just cut away your pencil mark, just pop that back in again. I can just about see where mine is there. So you know you're, you should have two pieces like this. And then where you've got these pencil marks, I'm just going to line up my cardstock on my grid anywhere, it doesn't really matter, it's just so I can keep my ruler straight. And you just want to draw down to meet that other pencil mark, like so. And then you're going to cut that out. Okay, so then I've got my two opposite ones. So again, I'm just going to quickly burnish that because I didn't do it. Okay, so you'll have this square down in the bottom and you'll have that score line just to there. So this time we're going to cut, we're going to do exactly the same, but it's all opposite. So now we're going to remove, sorry, we're just going to then cut up that score line to there. And then just cut wedges out of that bottom piece. It'll be much neater than I am. Remember I've already done this once and didn't record it. <laughs> so you'll have that. And then pop it on its side and you're going to cut all the way down that score line. Rotate it around again and remove that completely. Okay, and then you want to join up these again. Make sure you get them nice and straight. And again, cut that out. Okay, so now you should have two pieces like this. Now what you want to do is bring both of those pieces together. So you'll have this, okay? And where you've got the pencil marks, to be fair, you only need the pencil marks on one of them. So this is gonna stick over the top of this and it's gonna stick right up to the pencil marks. So I need to add glue to this one inch kind of strip, like so. And then you're gonna stick that over the top. Make sure you get everything lined up, okay? So, and you want to do that on the other one, so you'll have two pieces like this. One is the front of your bag, one is the back of your bag. So now, I'm going to bring in the one that I've done perfectly, but didn't push record. And you're going to need a wooden dowel, you'll need two, because you'll be doing this obviously twice. So, this is what we now are going to do. So we're going to work on this handle section, okay? So I'm just bringing over my other one here. I'm just going to mark a pencil mark. You obviously won't be able to do this because you haven't got this one ready, but it's just so I know how far down that I cut. So you want to come down about two and a quarter because all of this section here gets rolled around this. So if I lie that over the top, all of that, we actually not, well, I don't really lose it, but it gets rolled down to go around the dowel. So the only section you have that you really see that's cut out is this bit here, and that's to be able to put our hand through to be able to carry the wine bottle. So this one here, I've got it set at six and a half inches, which is about 16.2 centimetres. No, 16 and a half centimetres, sorry. I'm not used to working in centimetres. So you want to flip this around and you want to sit this right in the middle 
So I think you cut, it's 14 inches this piece here. Sorry, this section here is 11 inches. So you want to come in at five and a half. If you put a little pencil mark there, okay, you want to make sure that you have this right in the middle or your plate, if you've got a plate that's going over the top, just imagine that's a plate. You want to make sure that you've got equal overhang along this piece here. So whatever you're using, just make sure you've got it in the middle. All right, it doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter how far down you come. So if you come even further down, just means you won't have, maybe you have to decorate it differently or something. So yeah, don't worry too much. I've got to try and line this up where I, because you can't see, I think it's about there. Okay, so I've got mine where I need it. So I've got it in the center here. So I'm going to hold my paper and then you just want to cut out your semicircle like so. Okay. And then grab your pattern paper. Okay. And then you want to lie this down your pattern paper and you want it to be flush with the bottom score line here. And then you want to make sure that you've got even border here. So it should be about an inch, I think, isn't it? Yeah, because this is 12 and this is 14. So you should have an inch either side, okay? So that's easy to line up. And then if you hold it all there, okay, flip it over and then just draw around that bit and then you can just cut that out. Okay, and now when you sit that down, it will be flush with that circle. Now on my other one, I haven't, if I show you, but this is going to be the back. Can you see? And that was because I cut the semicircle bigger. I actually made a mistake on that one. So you can have it like that if you just make your circle bigger. But this is going to be the front and I'm going to keep it so that it's flush with it. I, I prefer that personally, all right? But it's entirely up to you. So that's your, your options there. So now you want to get that stuck down. So I'm going to add glue to the back of this. Now again, this is a really nice it dries nice and firm, so it is helping. So try and look at your glues and see what you've got. Um, also another one that I have said before is the Taser Easy Stick. This dries really, really strong and rigid, goes really stiff. So for those of you, if anybody's got it, that's also another good one. Because, you know, obviously the paper plays a big part, but sometimes the glue that you use as well because some glues will dry and still be quite soft. So that's maybe not the best one for this. We, we need all the strength we can get. So I'm just gonna turn this one over. Got my inch kind of there. Come across a little bit. It's a good thing with this is you get all this wiggle room as well. Okay. And the other thing I like about this Kalau is anything that oozes out, you can just rub your finger over it just completely rubs away. It's great stuff. Turn it over. Okay, so that's that now all done. So you need to do that twice. Everything I'm doing, you want to do see twice. And then you want to just, with a ruler, just kind of curve this like top piece here. So just this section here, just to help you get it to roll around that piece of dowel. Now, if you don't have this, and see what else you've got that's similar. <laughs> Maybe a plastic bit of piping. You can use ribbon on this. So if you wanted to have a strong ribbon coming off of this, but I would really reinforce it. I'd add brads to it and everything because these are heavy bottles of wine. Um, it doesn't actually say the weight of this, but it is, it is a heavy bottle. So the last thing I want is for anybody to make this and then their bottle of wine fall out the bottom. It, sh it shouldn't, <laughs> but don't hold me responsible. <laughs> especially if it's an expensive bowl. Okay, so now they're curled over like that, I'm gonna run some glue. I'm gonna use some white liquid glue here. This is the Dawn Bibby one. So this one dries very quick. And then you wanna pop in the wooden dowel and make sure that again, you've got an even amount overhanging. Okay, like so. I'm just gonna hold that there for a minute. Okay, and then I'm gonna add glue all around the exposed bit of dowel and all inside there. Again, I'm not too worried if this glue kind of oozes out because it's easy to kind of wipe away. And if you have one of these adhesive rubbers, they will remove anything. So now, you just want to very carefully 
really keep it nice and taut just roll it over until because the glue's kind of oozing out but it's moving along with it until you get to here okay to that point there and then just hold it there until it dries okay and then what you can do is flip it over and just kind of bring it towards yourself make sure it's dry at this point and just kind of create a little crease underneath if you want to use like I wouldn't use that actually because it's probably too sharp I'm just gonna go in there see what I'm doing just creating like a line like so and mine's a little bit I've cut this side down too far can you see where that one's completely flush with that side but this one's got that gap there I'm not gonna worry the thing is straight it's this has been cut down too far but hey I didn't even make a prototype, I've just gone straight into this one, so I'm pretty pleased. And then that's just drying a little bit still there. Okay, so mine's still drying a little bit, but I can get into the kind of, you know, putting it all together now. So all you're gonna do is stick your sides all together. Okay, so this one's gonna go over this one here. Now what I would say is always focus on this base score line. Get that lined up because if your squares are slightly off, like I've got a little bit sticking out there, I can just trim that off with my cutting knife. Okay, whereas you don't want to line the top up and then your base be out because you won't be able to fold it. So just focus on this, you can always tidy up that. You could cover it with some patterned paper, you could put a little decorative border there. There are lots of ways you can doctor and, and kind of save that if you want happy, but you can't do it if you do it the other way around. Okay, so I'm also going to just add glue to the base one, so whatever I'm not going to add it to the one that I'm sticking over it. I'm just going to stick to adding the glue to this piece here. So again, I'm going to stick with the Kalau because I know it's nice and strong. I just thought you need to stick um, glue on here as well. Now you can cut this away if you want, but I'm keeping all the cardstock I've got because I want this to be a strong base. So this is just reinforcing all of this card. So if you're thinking, why have you got both there? That's why. I don't want to cut away anything. I want to keep it all so it can stand the weight. Okay, and then if you flip it over and just fold one of the sides, you will then have this piece. And again, I want to focus on my score lines lining up like that. So I want to make sure I've got the same, because my oranges are slightly different colour, I think. Although they were from the same batch, or well, maybe they weren't actually. That one is going to go over there. Don't worry if your bottom bits are slightly off because that's all hidden. It's this one. These actually line up really nicely. So again, I'm going to add glue all to this piece. So you do want to go right over everything. Again, focus on the score line, the base score line. This score line here. Okay, so decide on what's going to be your front and your back. So this is going to be... I think I'm going to have it as my back. I keep looking at it now, whether I prefer that. No, I do prefer that. Okay, so this is my back, so that one's going to go down first. Okay. Now, because that one's going to be what you're going to see inside, what I would say is just, just take a little slither off of the edges here. Not too much, but because it is going to create bulk inside, along the sides of it, I think. So just take a little bit off. You'll be able to tell if you fold it in first of all and you can feel it catching on the sides, then just cut it away. See what I mean? When you fold that in, then you'll fold them in and then that. If you look inside, when it's all lined up, see that sits better now, whereas before it was just catching slightly. Now, see how you feel, what weight cardstock it is that you're using. And actually, I didn't tell you. So this is 220 cardstock that I'm using, okay? So see what it is that you're using. Now, you're gonna stick your back one down and then I'm gonna add glue to both of these, okay? So already the sides of this bag have got three pieces of this cardstock because obviously there's two on there and then this one. Then this over the top, that's four, just in the corners, and that's where I wanted to have all that strength, that's why I didn't want to cut any of them away. So I'm just gonna sit that one there for a second. And then just weight that down while I do this side. Okay, now what I've also got is I've got this 350 GSM card stock. So this is again, super strong, and I think I'm gonna add one there 
might add two, I don't know. Now these are just A4 length or 11 inches, whatever it is you've got, or 12, um, by three and a quarter, okay? And then that can be sandwiched in between just to give it more strength, but I think I'm gonna do both, just to, you know, just for, yeah, to be on the safe side. So I'm gonna, again, stick these two together first. I've just popped some glue on the back there and I'm just gonna focus on that center part. Just again, make sure you've got equal overhang there. If you've got something that's 14 inches long, then use that, of course. Again, just fold that down, turn the whole thing over. Just make sure that's stuck. It already does feel strong, and like I said, this dries really firm. And now I can just add glue to all of this and stick that last piece down. So, you know, use your own judgment see you know what the weight of your card is you might not be using this for wine obviously you don't have to put a bottle of wine in it you can put anything you want okay so there is my box finished now if you wanted to you could reinforce in there as well so there are lots of ways to be able to still strengthen this now with your side pieces you do want to just make sure because again mine's gone so stiff just curl it in towards itself just to kind of you want it to kind of sit there naturally on its own like so and then these bits you want to kind of go in your side pieces there all right but now confidently that wine bottle will be wrapped in tissue and it holds and if I pop it on its side it's hard for you to see but it doesn't bow can you kind of see I'm still holding it but it doesn't bow out and that's what I didn't want and I'm sure that glue is probably still drying, but that does hold a bottle of wine and I'm really pleased with it. I think it looks really nice. I'll probably add a gift tag to it. Like I said, wrap that in tissue, but it's, yeah, it works and I'm pleased with it. Obviously, would I run around with it for hours? No. Does anybody run around with a gift bag for hours? No. But to get to and from and then to have it displayed wherever or to just, you know, keep stored for a while yes it's going to hold up it's going to be fine so yeah i hope that's answered some of your questions because lots of you have asked me to do a wine bottle one but it is hard to do because i don't want to tell you to do something and i mean i have had one of these fall out the bottom of my carrier bag shopping before and smash everywhere i've seen people there's fall out of their hands in the supermarkets and red wine goes everywhere over the, the aisle I don't want to feel like I've been the one that's done that to any of you so please make sure you use a strong cardstock you use a glue that you know preferably dries very stiff and you reinforce it on the bottom okay and um, you shouldn't have any problems with it so yeah I hope you've, hope you've enjoyed this one it's a bit of a different one slightly different kind of process than normal but it's the the best way that I could think to do it for the minute and still I keep going back to the box style but I want to get it right before I put the tutorial out there so it is something that I've gone to a few times now but I'm still not happy with it so yeah until next time hope you've enjoyed it if you have please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more Thanks for watching. Bye.